Hi there, welcome to Art for Larks. This is another one of our little things we'll be doing on this channel. We're going to be doing some little art lessons, but we're not doing them necessarily to create a masterpiece. We're not doing it because we are already stunning, incredible artists. We're just doing it for larks, which means we're just doing it for a bit of fun. And that's why I'm doing it. And today we're talking all about surrealism. Now, surrealism is when it's kind of not the same as the opposite of real, which is unreal. If something is surreal, it means it's like beneath reality. There's some truth in it, but it's not quite right. It doesn't sit in the right place. If something is surreal, it might be inspired by dreams, for example. And lots of surrealist artists who've created artwork in the 20th century were inspired by dreams, by the kind of mysterious workings of the imagination. They're inspired by all of these things and their artwork unsettles a little bit. When you look at it, you're kind of just there thinking, what am I looking at here? It kind of looks a bit odd. Some might say it looks a bit creepy sometimes, some of them. So what we are going to be doing is we will learn a tiny bit about it. I'll show you four different creative pieces from different surrealist artists. And then we will have a go at creating our own room of surrealism inspired by dreams. Now, one thing that would be a great way to inject loads of ideas into this project is if you are able to remember your dreams, you might want to use some of these strange things that sometimes happen in your dreams and use that as fuel in your work. That's what a lot of the surrealist artists did is that they spent time kind of remembering their dreams, recording them in detail, either through doodles and drawings or maybe through writing as well. And they used what happened in their dreams as inspiration for their artwork. I would invite you to do the same. So first of all, I'm going to show you a little bit of artwork and I'll show you four different artists and that will begin in a second. But first, I'll just show you something surreal. It's gonna be sitting, it's gonna be sitting over there. This first painting that we're looking at is called Le Grand Tour by Sir Roland Penrose. It was painted in 1938, so one year before World War II. When you look at this, you can see lots of different objects. What can we see? We can see the word rain. We can see an AOK -okay symbol. It looks like there's some sky between the fingers. I can see a corkscrew. I can see a fish. I can see splashes of colour in places I wouldn't expect to see them. I can see some geometric drawing too which will be an interesting part of our work. I can see people dancing. What can you see? Now this second painting is by Dorothea Tanning. It was painted in 1943, so again, a few years into the war. And it's called Eine Kleine Nachtmusik, which is a really famous piece of music too. I'll play you a little bit now. This painting is kind of scary, I find. You've got this gigantic, wilting daffodil, and you can see from the girl's hair, it's kind of floating upwards as if she's underwater. And the people look like they're floating and moving around in a dreamlike state. It can be a bit scary, this one. I find it a bit unnerving. The next one is Landscape from a Dream by Paul Nash, painted sometime between 36 and 38. I can see a coastline. All of these strange, unexpected objects. These gigantic circles, it looks like there's a mirror, a giant bird reflected. We've got one here by Salvador Dali. It's called Old Couple or Musician. Can you see it's an optical illusion? When you're looking at this, some of you will first of all see two old people kind of hugging and staring into each other's eyes. Some of you will see two musicians. When some of you see the old man's ear, when you're looking at exactly the same thing, some people might see a lady coming out of a doorway. 
when we look at that golden light between the two old people, some of you might see some kind of candlestick holder or a vase. Interesting, isn't it? An optical illusion, something very surreal about it too. Now, surrealism isn't just from that period. There are still surrealist-inspired artists working today. This photographer um, is called Sonia Hurtado. She created a huge, fantastic set of um, photographs inspired by fairy tales. She makes them seem very, very unnerving and interesting. Which fairy tale do you think this is? What can we see in this picture? I can see the roots of a giant tree up above. I can see a light switch. I can see a cow. Maybe the cow's called Daisy. I can see a boy with an axe and I can see his shadow okay, is not So we're going like to start thinking then about our own artwork. Now we're going to be doing some geometric drawing. It's going to, all that you're going to need is some paper, a pencil or pen, probably a pencil might be better actually, um, and a ruler. We're going to need a ruler for this. We've got to be quite precise. We're going to take you over to my artwork over here now, okay? See you over there in a second. three-dimensional room so it's going to begin with a kind of perspective drawing. The surrealist element in what we will do is going to be slightly inspired by that painting that we saw of dear, um, we're going to be slightly inspired by the painting that Dorothea Tanning did. So we're going to do an indoor scene and we're going to create a three-dimensional room. Now in order to do this kind of drawing we're going to begin by making one point. You might be using a pencil and that's better if you do. I will use this pen because you'll see it more clearly. It needs to be very small, it's not going to be part of your artwork, but it's fundamental to what we do afterwards. Now, what we're going to create here is the back wall of our room. The larger we make our shape at the back, the kind of the bigger the room is going to seem, or certainly the closer it's going to seem. You'll see what that means. So for me, I'm going to draw a rectangle. really really important here is that we look carefully at where this dot is. We need to imagine, and I'll do it with pencil first so you can see, no matter what lines we draw every single one of them needs to go through one of these corners and through the point in the middle. So if I'm going to draw one part of the ceiling I've got my point here and it needs to line up with the corner and I'm going in a straight line along from this point, but I've not drawn along the back, through the corner, to the edge of the page. I'll do the same over here. On the dot. Oops. I'll go through the corner, and all the way to the edge of the page. I'll do the same here. That gives us the impression of three-dimensional space. But in order to make it work really, really well, we're going to need to do a few things. We're going to add doors, corridors, and windows. A door will go along the floor. This is like the kind of the wall and the wall, the ceiling and the floor. Again, this dot is so important. I want to have a door here. I'm going to have a big door here and I'm going to have a little tiny door here. It will give the impression, which is a bit confusing, that we don't know whether it's different sized portals or whether it's um, a very, very long wall. So I'm going to start by going up in a horizontal line. Not horizontal, sorry, vertical. I always confuse those. I'm going to go up there. Quite random, isn't it, that? And what I need to do then to make the top of my door frame, I must line it up with my dot once again. I'm making this one quite large. And then 
this is going to come straight down again, very much vertically. There we go. I just drew it on my uh, on my ruler rather than with it. And that is perfect. Now it looks a bit like a door, but we only need to do one thing to make it look even more like a door, and that is to do a horizontal line from this corner. Suddenly, you can imagine somebody walking through here into the room. I've said I want to make a little tiny door, so I'm going to do a little tiny line on this side. And again, I must use my dot, otherwise the perspective won't work. It's a tiny door, and another vertical line, straight down, and another horizontal line. so that we can see some weird stuff going on outside. This window is going to be about in the middle of this whole wall. So I'm going to go like this. We've got a straight line here. Once again, as always, we have to use that dot. So I put my pen in the middle to line up my ruler. This line go as far as this a little bit more so that I can go down another vertical line. Now if I've not measured that quite right it's not a problem. See, I've left that gap and it's closer here than it is here. I'll do the same on this side. I'll join these up. There we go, I've got a slight window frame. If I wanted to, then obviously I can paint something or draw something out there on the outside, and that would look very mysterious and interesting. One final thing, just like we've made our door here, I can make a big scary hole in the floor and that hole is going to be here. So I'm going to have a horizontal line and I use once again these. Do you know what? I'm going to make this even longer actually. So I've got my horizontal line, I put my pen in the middle, go to the end of my horizontal line. moment it just looks like a carpet if I want a carpet fantastic I can keep it like that if I don't I just need to do again um, gosh, vertical lines going straight down I keep forgetting those um, now we've got a hole in the floor now I can achieve that idea of it being three-dimensional by adding shade to different parts of it too so let's say if I've got a light source over here, that would mean that this bit here would be in the shade more. I'm going to do my shade just by doing lines. Now if I do them close together like this, then it seems fairly dark. But if I space them out differently here, it means it's darker than this. Than this. I can do different things. Now, if I want to look really three dimensional, I could maybe.
we've got a pair of hands down here as if there's some poor unfortunate person just trying to grab Side, I'll have something interesting. So if I've been dreaming about trees, I might have some tree leaves out here. just don't know. Now if you've got stuff that has been there in your dream, you can add that in. Um, I remember doing this activity when I was in school and I'd had a nightmare about a spider, so I drew on the back wall a big thick spider body. And it's not even necessarily like a real spider here, it's like the impression that you have of a spider. three-dimensional drawing there are three things to remember one you have a point right in the middle of your page two find as you want to go with a rectangle over here you could try it with different shapes if you had a triangle you'd have to just go off in three lines rather than one two three four remember that every single one of your room lines must pass through the middle point in order to make it look three-dimensional and remember if you are doing doors and windows you have a vertical line vertical line. And your horizontal lines are kind of not really horizontal because from the perspective they must pass through your centre point. Okay. If you want to create the illusion of three dimensional like holes like we've got in the floor or as if you want to give the impression of a corridor you would have a horizontal line on your doors on your walls here and here and you have a vertical line if you've got it on the floor and that would look like you've got a hole in the ground over here or if you put one up on the roof it'd be like a tunnel going up the choice is yours experiment with it the more color the more detail you add the better if we really want to go with that whole idea of surrealism perhaps think about your dreams keep a dream diary and see what you can come up with use your ideas and piece them all into 